and every other conversation will have the option, teach me a word of your language. Wow. Well, the thing is, I was going to do the Atlas, the, the monolith or whatever, but you got all these pirates. They got a lot of danger right in that where I found it. So oh, yeah. so it's like for me, I'm a lot like nervous. I'm getting shot at, you know, just to going from the star base to the planet. So that area, you know, which is in my, let's say yeah. my area of these three sectors I've been going around in, yeah. I could go to the Atlas and I'm thinking maybe they give me that Atlas pass to open up those things on the which in my video that it was where I couldn't open yeah. the, the thing, you know. Yeah, uh, the Atlas for me is a system that's still like three systems away. And uh, the latest ship that I got, all I need is some resources and I'll be able to do two jumps at once. Wow. So you like upgrade how many you can go, like skipping stars basically. Are you just going or are you like trying no, I'm to stop stay in each area? area. So, um, I was going to say, the, um, this reminds me of when I worked at Nintendo as a, as a game tester. Mm hmm Like, they put me in a high priority, like, they kept, it's a con, you know, contract role. They tell okay. them to have up to, like, a hundred contractors to test a game out. Right. Um, because usually in order to pass a game to be released that has to have so many hours you know human played logging hours oh i didn't know that's considered like ready to go yeah um and i had a high propensity for finding bugs or exploits <laughs> yeah uh and so i was like up there in the you know the, you know in, in their preference of picking me to to work on their stuff I'm good at getting stuck. <laughs> yeah, good at getting find, stuck. I can find stuck places. Good at, you know, crashing the game. Basically, anything yeah. that makes the game not fun. Right. Right. Or, you know, or forces the person to restart their game is considered a, a broken thing. You can't. Yeah. Have, you know, so I, you know, things like jumping out of the map, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, my mind does that when I play games. Like, I'm always seeking the most efficient angle to, like, to, you know, get to the end zone sort of thing. Right, right. It's like there's no coach or ref there. It's just, you know, you and, and whatever you can do. Um, and, and so I'm into using exploits, but I'm not into cheating, like using codes or whatever. Right. And um, I'm not into getting exploits from other people yeah it's almost like it all has to be self you know discovered in a way well, and i I'm, realized I'm... that their testing department didn't catch some stuff that i would have caught and they're like multiple things that you know yeah. um overall if i was part of the company i'd say you gotta fix these things oh yeah well, not to mention being able to talk with an alien four hours using the same dialogues over and over again is not immersive at all yeah you know it loses just immersiveness. don't do that on just don't do that on ESO they actually do ban people for for using exploits that you know are not intended yeah. you know like they'll have a t like they have a charge yeah. where it's supposed to be you know 28 meters and the guys like charging over the cast into a castle and they're not yeah. allowed to do they're not supposed to do that right. and they, if, if somebody films you or you know like these video streamers they actually could they said and announced they would ban people for doing i'm not saying yeah. no man's sky is doing that but well um there was an exploit you heard about it i don't know if you've heard about it or read about it where basically one of the no. objectives in the game is to follow the Atlas path to get to like the center of the galaxy. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about that. Well, either. there's a guy who, who basically found an exploit where he could constantly build warp, uh, warp fuel, right? So all he has to do is just warp. Right? What do you mean by build? You mean accumulate well, you can, warp? You, can, you construct the the warp fuel. Right, for your warp drive. Right, to go the warp between systems. cells. Yeah. Yeah, warp cells. But basically, he has access to an infinite number of those. Oh, okay. It still took him, apparently, 30 hours to, 
to get there. So. Well, I'm, you'd be super rich, right? Or I don't to know, get where? I don't to know the what center? the exploit is, but basically, they had to fix that because he drew a lot of attention how he was doing it and showing other people how it was done. Yeah. Right? Well, that's one way to make them get it fixed, right? Is to right. show someone actually doing it. And know? and that's kind of where I'm I'm coming from. Like I could basically say, you know, I'm cheating because there's things that I discovered and I could take advantage of them. Like I could just show my screen. How many hours or how many feet have I walked? Because it has this thing like achievement for how many, you know, how far distance right. you've gone. That doesn't compute with how rich I got and doesn't compute with how I killed so many sentinels so really easily, right. there's something broken here. There's a way of playing that is not immersive if someone wants to do that. And for right. me, you know, I don't care. What I care is that I'm enjoying myself. Now, if other people like using cheats, which would be an exploit deliberately searching for it, that would be considered cheating. You see the difference right. between like discovering it yourself and taking advantage of a system and cheating? The developers don't care if I'm exploiting something. What they care about is I'm making it easy for other people to exactly. have the same experience. How it affects others. Because if right. it's for yourself, That's especially fine. in those I'm other not, type games that I mentioned, the image. right? You know, I'm not right. Then you're affecting other people's game and who's paying of course they're paying for it right some of them maybe not the free free to play games but then you're affecting others and and you uh, might even say their competitive interest maybe they don't even use it but if they're trying to compete with like you know you know who's going to get the biggest spaceship first mm -hmm. and that's kind of like a drive they have you know yeah uh you know this idea of just gold farming is is oh, that's every a game. Bad idea. Yeah. Or that thing where the Sentinels no longer attack you on a significantly rich planet. You know, the whole idea of it, it was bugged. It was blinking five, you know, five star damage, but they right. weren't coming after me anymore. Right? And I just was hopping around. These Graviton you know, balls were so plentiful. It was like, it's like everywhere. Wow. Um, like traveling on that planet supposed to be a problem and you're supposed to be attacked when you pick one of them up that's how significant it is it's a 27,000 thing and I'm picking them up like every minute you know Wow. that's yeah. a problem um, well I mean there's, there I is no doing, comp and competition I was even close in to the my game ship. I could but... transfer it to my ship storage I was still close yeah. enough to it yeah. but I've also found a bug where if you try transferring stuff to your ship and you're too far away, uh, sometimes even you won't be able to transfer anything to your ship until you get into it. So even if you get back into range, it won't wow. work. So there's just like lots of little early bugs that yeah. you know, I have a mind of just telling the developer to fix them. You know? Well, usually most games do. This is actually, I have to say on the positive side, this game is one of the better ones, especially for the, the, their size company. Yeah. It waited till it was mostly done, let's say, you know, instead yeah. of like in Steam, you have almost, I don't know, I want to say 90% of the games are like in framework, you know, yeah. they're all like half not even working or whatever. And it's like, oh, check out our game. Everybody, of course, being nice and saying, oh, this game looks great, you know, and then when the game actually comes out or is, let's say, more along in the beta stages, everybody starts down thumbing it then, saying, oh, this is just terrible, they're all stealing my stuff. Tree of Life is an example of this yeah. that I was really looking forward to, and before I even got it, it went from mostly positive to mostly negative because everybody starts stealing, they're all exploiting. Now, you know, the, the, the guild leaders are stealing all the stuff from the players and nobody can have fun on it because everything is being destroyed and stolen, you know, and so, it's kind of, it's kind of, I mean, but this that, is, this game is... that risk, right, of like releasing yeah. something before you've dealt with the, yeah. with the issues. And I feel like, you know, No Man's Sky is a small company and I do want to help them, but... I, I almost feel like I want to trade it for an interview with with uh, 
With Sean. <laughs> With Sean. Yeah. So I'll tell you a whole bunch of problems and probably, you know, that you could easily fix with some code writing in your next patch. You know, I especially like now like that it. they have the team, because yeah, I'd, usually I'd like in the latter stages, to, they yeah, don't, like, you know, but I'd now like they have their have team. Chat there. With Sean. Yeah. This is the moment to do it. I don't know if they have. I'm surprised that it, I haven't seen it. Uh, a place to report bugs like some other games have. I haven't seen anything here. Mm, well, normally, yeah, that's not normally an option. You have to write them directly. Mm. You know, like write to their. ESO you have to write to their special... support, their support uh, email on their on their website. I see. On, yeah. uh, on Hello Games. Um, you know, and I'm thinking of doing private videos and recording these to show because that that's be what they great. did at Nintendo. Is everything is just basically taped. It's a lot easier to demonstrate a bug if you have video proving yeah. you can do it more than once. Doing it more right. than once means it's not a fluke. And in my case, the flukes have been coming too quickly and too easily. Well, like in ESO, the bug fixers want that because they have a special, you know, like a report page. They want you to put every single detail you can so that they can track it down, what you're wearing, where you were, what you were mm -hmm. doing, you know, everything so they can yeah. go so back. They might consider all the factors that are taking place. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like, so in this case, my Nintendo testing training kicks in back. yeah i haven't i haven't worked at nintendo in like 10 years right not since like yeah. early gamecube or something but um you know i i'm i'm halfway conflicted the other thing was uh i don't know if you know much about pokemon go not only from actually from you more than anything okay. from your well i i already know i already saw exactly how pokemon go was gonna finish itself off. I already knew exactly what they needed to implement in order to maintain their status. Like they got a large audience, but the entire audience was gonna leave once certain things became realized. Like like you were mentioning how the same location everybody can get the same No, Pokemon, it's more no? like how it becomes exponentially difficult to catch Pokemon as you get higher levels, forcing you to almost, almost forcing you to buy Pokemon balls. Oh, the money Pokeballs. part, yeah. Uh, now you can get free balls by waiting five minutes at a Pokestop, so like a landmark. But catching a Pokemon can literally chew up more than you're getting every five minutes. So you either like spend a whole day just to make progress that in the earlier part of the game they gave to you in like half an hour right? yeah so that sort of like quotient makes the game very exclusive to hardcore players and makes all the gyms basically people who have like won the gyms and are holding the gyms exclusive to hardcore players and pokemon from the get-go when it you know it stripped down all its features and made it real simple right compared to the actual pokemon games it was intended to be for the casual player you know but yeah. it becomes exclusive because the the path of development they're going after hardcore has a very money very players. steep has a very steep yeah. line at one point and yes people who don't realize it will spend their first 10 or 20 bucks and they'll quit angry enough saying I don't have 20 bucks to do you know more than once a day that's a, that's a lot of money especially but, how big know, it's it a, is it's a lot of money right yeah and there's a, a point lot. where that illusion disappears and their money bubble that they that they stood on disappears because their user base is going down and nobody's bothering to compete any longer it's mm. like no one's gonna compete with their pocketbook at a certain point because everyone's basically leaving the game it's like a you know, it's a paradox. If you don't have the pocketbook, then you don't, you know, the game does not, you know, is not considered yeah, reasonable the by the public, right? Yeah. If not everybody's playing it, then the pocket, you know, it's, it's a revolving door. It causes the same effect. 
So I saw those paradoxes in the routine of how it was played very early on. I didn't even get to... I didn't even get to high levels before I realized exactly how it's gonna pan out. And I'm like... You know, what am I gonna do? Do I call him up and give him my advice on how to keep this, you know, right. this gravy train going or something? Because or, you, know, you don't want to spend the whole day somewhere. Who has that kind of time, you know? Well, I mean, like you said, except the hardcore people. Well, the point is, is that people want games like uh, No Man's Sky and uh, Pokemon Go to share between hardcore and non-hardcore. It's, it's always the dynamic in the gaming world is the hardcore players enjoying themselves and the people who are just getting into playing something for fun, they're gonna enjoy it. Now, yeah. the Pokemon Go designers are not hardcore gamers, unfortunately. No Man's Sky, uh, Hello Games, they're not hardcore gamers. Hardcore gamers often ruin games for softcore gamers. I noticed that, yeah. So that dynamic between the two, and, and sometimes they just call it the metagame. Hardcore players play the metagame, which is I like... I finally heard that. I finally figured out what that term... I heard that term like for already a couple of years. Yeah. Recently, and I didn't like, know what it meant until like two months ago. Yeah. yeah, it's like the subtle details of perfection. Yeah. Right? It's well, like ESO, that's happening in ESO. You have these hardcore players, they're beating it so fast, so the developers, they're making stuff so hard now to do, and it took, they just announced it, somebody finally beat this dungeon, and it took five months for them to finally beat the elite level of this dungeon since it mm -hmm. came out. Mm -hmm. I mean... And so the thing is... The hardcore gamers are always going to exist. You can't make a game for just easy, for just the casual gamers. Right, because they'll There's get bored too. There's always a percentage of the casual gamer that's going to be a hardcore market, which is like really just yeah. 1% or something, or Both. 5%, right? The people are going to go out and they're going to beat No Man's Sky like by tomorrow, you know? Uh, they're, you know, they're basically playing around the clock, right? Remember when Fallout 4 came out? Oh, I didn't touch that one, but, but... you're familiar. It's, it's, you know, it's an RPG. Yeah. It's going to take a long time to beat. Yeah, it's like a Skyrim. Yeah. Right. People beat it in 24 hours. Wow. Right? Yeah. So they're already posting, and they're talking about in-game content. You know, the story was okay, blah, 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 blah. Even if it's... You know, basically, you know, like journalists and reporters, they're not supposed to do that crap. Right? Because they know it, um, it chastises the reader. Right? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it just, it destroys the equilibrium of exploration. And No Man's Sky, again, like, like any game that you're exploring how to play it, right? They, they, they intentionally gave very little tutorial. That was, you know, in the script. They did mm -hmm. not tell you how to play this game. And it's not right. because they couldn't. They didn't start a wiki, they said, you know, let the community teach the community how to play. Right. I thought it was fun when I learned, like, what was it? The the, the smiley face on, you know, and I intentionally did not want to look at any of the, uh, the videos. Mm -hmm. Because there I saw, like, uh, what was it? Uh, some, whatever rumor that some guy had bought the code or something like this from somehow off of eBay or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or he got a copy of the game and started to post it on YouTube. So on Steam they were saying, no, don't, don't ruin it. So I didn't. I didn't look at any any videos right. other than the trailers from Sean, you know, a couple yeah. of them. Yeah. So I, I don't want to do that because I was looking forward to it. And when I fed the animal and I saw the smiley face, I mean, that put a smile on me. I was like, oh, cool, you could feed the animals. And I didn't know that, you know. And one of the videos I saw afterwards says things that No Man's Sky doesn't tell you. Yes. And that was one of the things that I discovered or like even, uh, what was it? The, the running, like when you sprint, yeah. I was holding down shift and that's a Minecraft thing, you know, you have yeah, to hold yeah. down shift to run fast. And now um, when I let go once, I'm like, oh, I'm still running fast. You don't, have to, hold, you don't have to hold it down. You could just tap it. Yeah, well, that's great, about. you know, because it saves my finger or whatever from, yeah. but look, those little things are nice, you know, that you, that you discover, you know, in and, a game. And, you know, there's a time before the internet was big 
where discovering games was at a local level, you know? Like, your community was like your high school or something. Yeah. You know, or exactly. you know, your peers. People You'd stay after house. school just to play on the computers. Yeah. Right, so the hardcore gamers 